जय श्री माता जी लेट अस ऑल बाउ डाउन टू श्री माता जी रेज अवर मदर कुंडलिनी एंड पुट बंधन श्री गणेश मंत्र Let us all place our right hand towards Mother Earth, left hand in our lap. And let us pray here, Shamata Ji. Kindly balance our left channel. माता जी काइंडली टेक अवे ऑल द लिथा जी ऑल द थॉट्स फ्रॉम द पास्ट इन टू द अर्थ एलिमेंट श्री माता जी काइंडली हेल्प to establish the power of pure desire within us now let us balance our right channel with our left hand towards the sky Kindly take away all the excessive heat from our right channel. Shamata ji, kindly establish the power of pure attention within us. Now 
let us place both our hands on our lap. Shamathaji, kindly bring us all into complete balance and help us to stabilize our attention. on our sastra Now in this state let us listen to Shamata ji's speech Today we are celebrating in Switzerland the coronation of Sri Rama on the Shera Day. Many things happened on the Shera Day. <clears throat> the most important was that Sri Rama was coronated as a king on this day. he also killed ravana on this day many may say that how can it be he killed ravana and he was coronated on the same date in those days in india we had supersonic aeroplanes <laughs> and is a fact and the aeroplane's name was pushpak meaning the flower it was called as pushpak and it has a tremendous speed so after killing ravana he came to ayodhya with his wife and that was the day he was crowned on the ninth day he worship the goddess to get strength shakti for his weapons and the 10th day he killed ravana so you can imagine how much advanced people were there at the time of sri rama and his kingdom the reason was the king was an incarnation also he was a benevolent king as described by socrates <coughs> sri rama's story is very interesting throughout and we have now a beautiful series about him done by our television in india which is sold for a very good price maybe we might be able to present you all with one when you come there <coughs> but the story of rama they say was written before he was born even before there was any inkling of it the seer valmiki wrote the whole story of sri rama sri rama's birth and all that are brought forth by the agni the fire and he was born in the dynasty of the surya is the sun so with all that it born out of the blessings of the agni that is fire and also was born in the dynasty of surya he was one of the mildest avatars you have ever had he is known to be a very i mean english language formal person in the sense <laughs> some coach that he would go to any extent 
to bear upon himself the problems than to tell others to do something. <coughs> we still had many people in India like that, like we had one Prime Minister, Lal Bahadur Shastri. And if he was sitting in the room and there are people sitting and this electricity was on somehow, say by <coughs> light or something, and he wants to put it off, he would not ask anyone to put it off. Slowly he'll get up in the, from his seat, walk up to the switch and just put it off, so that he shouldn't ask for anything. This is one of the greatest quality of Sri Ram, that he would not make anyone do anything for him or order anything or would use someone for their purpose. See, he was the, was the blessing of fire and born in the Surya. But what we find, those people who are born maybe in very lowly families, in the negative families, the left-sided, as you can call it, with all kinds of problems, have a terrible Agya and a terrible Surya in them. The person who is born in the Surya has to be extremely humble. He is the one who shows that nothing can affect, nothing can make him feel that he is something great. Now, when uh, we see his life further, uh, he was a very humble man. We've seen now uh, people uh, who try to despise others. I don't like you. I don't like. It's not good. It's very difficult. It's a sign that such a person is extremely low in character, has no character at all, but is low in character. Anybody who has any character is shown by the tolerance he has of other people. Intolerance is a sign of a person who is extremely egoistical and has is vain, this vanity. Sri Rama was so much loved by the people where he ruled in that state. And he had the most beautiful wife of uh, the most venerated father, Janaka, and who was the beloved son of his father. But he was such an humble man, such an humble man, that in all his character you see the beauty, like he was going by a little boat when he went for his exile. And the one who was taking him was an ordinary uh, boatman. And the boatman was feeling very much uh, upset that he's sitting before the king of Ayodhya and he doesn't have proper clothes. So Sri Rama, who was himself, was wearing nothing but uh, valkalas, or the clothes uh, which are worn by the village people uh, or, which, or the worn by the people who live in the primitive areas, only uh, kind of uh, leaves that they have. He had to wear that because his mother, the stepmother, asked for that kind of a boon from the father. And then Sri Rama just told him, why are you worried? I'm wearing this, I'm no more a king. I'm sitting before you like this, you should be quite comforted. And I really don't know how to steer the boat, while you know how to steer the boat. So why should you be worried? Like that, he kept the, even the people who we would call as uh, low in society at a very high pedestal. Which shows that he respected uh, human beings. He himself is called as Maryada Purushottama. Means he was the one who had who knew 
how far to go with someone, Mariyata. How to talk to someone, how to approach someone. While we find uh, people who misbehave, uh, even with their husbands, with their wives, with their children, with everyone, uh, and also outside they are about to jump on us. That's absolutely against Rama, it's like Ravana. Even Ravana was not like this. He was also of not that nature. Because he had certain dharmas within him. He was a realized soul, but he had become a Rakshasa because he uh, became arrogant. But even his arrogance cannot be matched with many modern people and modern girls and men that I hear and see that it is surprising they have really surpassed Ravana. Ravana only had ten heads, but sometimes I feel that the modern men might have or the women especially, might have 108 hits. <laughs> the <coughs> arrogance, the amount of expression of hatred is so ridiculous and makes a person look so useless. But I see such people very common, and in, in Sahaja Yoga also they crawl somehow. Actually, such people are absolutely despised by God Almighty. You go further with his life. See, he went and uh, into the village where a very old woman who was belonging to the primitive class of Bheels had very few teeth, and brought she brought some. Uh, some fruits, little fruits we call as pear. And she brought and gave it to him that Sri Ram, you see, I have got these for you. I don't have anything else. And these, I've tested all of them. Actually, in India, if you put in the mouth, it is Uttishta. Nobody will touch it. But she says, I've tested all of them by piercing my teeth into it. And I've seen that they, none of them are sour. Sri Rama, didn't like sour foods, she knew. So none of them are sour and you can have them. I mean, in a way, if it is done to somebody in the West, they will hit you hard. <laughs> Immediately, Sri Rama rushed forward and took the uh, baits from her hand, kissed her hands, said, all right, all right, I'm going to have them. With such enthusiasm, he ate them. So Lakshmana was a little angry at that lady. Was this going on? So Sita ji said, Oh, do you like them very much? She said, Yes, but I'm not going to give you anything. She said, No, I'm your half body, you have to give me. So he gave some to Sita ji. So Sita ji, ate, oh, what a thing. It's like nectar of heaven I'm eating. So Lakshmana felt very jealous. <laughs> He said, Sister-in-law, can I not have a little of it? He said, no, <laughs> I can't give you. You ask your brother. I'm not going to give you, I have a very little share. Why don't you ask your brother? So he goes to his brother, he said, can I have some more? So Sri Rama smiled and gave him that bear, which was eaten or touched or was pierced by the teeth of a primitive woman who is actually an outcast according to the Brahmanic laws of India. The sweetness of Sri Rama, the way he used to make people feel comfortable. Like, I would say, an example of a oyster who gets a little stone into the body of the shell, takes out a kind of a shiny uh, liquid and covers it with that shiny liquid and makes it into a pearl to be comfortable. Now, he didn't want his own comfort, Rama a little bit different, that he wanted 
to make everyone into a diamond or a pearl so that the other person would shine and would look nice. And that's how he felt comforted. His qualities, if you have to imbibe, first of all, we have to understand the innate situation of Sri Rama. Sri Rama is placed on the right hand side of your heart. Right hand side, right heart, he is placed there. Now, in a human being, there is no right heart. If you tell somebody there's right heart, they say, what, there are two hearts or three hearts? <laughs> in our, in our Sahaja Yoga, we have three hearts. <laughs> one is the left, another is the right, and one is the center. Now, the right heart is a very important thing. The right heart looks after the whole lungs both the lungs, or the throat, the trachea, the nose, the inner part. The outer side is looked after, we can say the features are given by Sri Krishna, but the inner part of it is all done by Sri Rama. They are the same, but one acts as in the inner part, the another as the outer part. It gives you the ears, from the inner part, Sri Rama does, he gives you the eyes in the inner part of the eyes. Now, it's so important to have the inner side all right and the outer side. It's an example of Sri Rama. He never cared for the outer side or the outward looks of a person. Because he came before Sri Krishna, he tried to build up the inner side of a human being. So we can say, though he is on the right heart, he acts through your Hamsa chakra and partly through your Vishuddhi chakra in the inner side of it. Because Sri Krishna, in the inner side of it, is Sri Ram, is Sri Vishnu. So when somebody is uh, say, not good-looking according to the Western standard. According to me, the Western standards are rather funny, <coughs> because Western standards don't look like, neither like Krishna or Sri Rama. The person like Sri Rama was a very healthy, tall uh, person, with his hands up to the knees. Ajahnubhava, he's the one who has Ajahnubhava. And he was plump, both of them were plump. They had to be plump people, because they were, though uh, they were born of the Agni, he was born of the Agni, but the water is the main element of Sri Vishnu. So they were all plump people. They were not thin like sticks, as today's modern ideas are, to be thin like sticks and like TB patients. But it doesn't mean all plump people are good. We always logically think that plump people are, if mother says so, then plump people are good. It's not the point. The inner side of it, I'm saying. The inner side of it is just the opposite. Inner side of it is absolutely beautiful and absolutely full of love, affection and warmth. A person who doesn't have these things is a sign of a person who is not a surgeon, first of all. A person who is very loud, talks loudly, speaks loudly, laughs at wrong places, must be half mad, but cannot be a surgeon. See, the softness of Sri Rama goes to the extremes where I call the sankocha, the formality, the formal. But it is the English language, formal is not the word, sankoch. He was once 
uh, when he was fighting Ravana. He was taking out with his arrow his ten heads one after another, and if he took out one, then took out the second, the first one would come back. So, because he had a kind of a blessing that nobody can kill him by hitting him on his head. So, Lakshmana says, you know for definite that this Ravana cannot be killed by hitting on his head, so why don't you hit him in his heart? So, he said, the reason is this, that just now in his heart is Mahalakshmi, the Sita. Sita is sitting in his heart. And how can I hit him on his heart? Because she's there, she might be hurt. So what's the use of hitting on the head, he said. He said, because once I start hitting him on the head fast, his attention will go there. As soon as his attention will go into his head, then I can hit him on his heart. See the Sankoch. <coughs> See the Sankoch, the way he talked. Now we have, Sina, what's wrong with you? Why are you all the time smiling and like that? Why can't you keep quiet? What is there to smile about certain things where you don't have to smile? Keep quiet. Now, then what happened that he was uh, so kind once when a very ugly woman, Shurpanakha, came to entice him. And she said, she came to entice, she said that, Rama, why don't you marry me? I mean, to a person like Rama, who is Maryada Purushottama, to ask such a horrible questions. Somebody would have really beaten her up, if not anything else. So Sri Ram smiled. He said, Madam, I'm sorry, I have a wife, and I, be, I believe in one wife, Eka Patni Vrat. So I'm sorry, I can't marry you. But mischievously says, all right, my brother is there, his wife is left in Ayodhya, you can ask. So he went to her and he asked, uh, she went to him and asked, Lakshmana, why don't you marry me? She had become very beautiful, she has transformed herself to a beautiful woman. She must have gone to some beauty parlour or something. But she made herself like that. And she was there, and he looked at her, so angry. He said, you, the ugly, why do you want to ask such a question? He cut her nose. When he cut her nose, that was in Nasik, and that's why Nasika means the nose, and that's why you have been to Nasik. That's the place where he cut her nose. He was very angry. But Sri Rama did not. He said in a way that's very convincing that, see, I have a wife and I'm a person who believes in my one wife.
महामंत्र Thank you, Shamataji, for blessing us with this beautiful morning meditation. Let us all bow down to Shamataji, raise our Mother Kundalini, and put Bandhan. We will continue again tomorrow morning, same time. Jai Shri Mataji.